All right, we got four check marks in here. Let's get everybody else in here right now before we're officially going for our Tuesday night show on Mile High Huddle, which is, of course, building the Broncos. There's one check mark. There's the second. Welcome in. It is 6.01 p.m. Uh, just just a little late for uh, Broncos for Breakfast kicking off. I am Nick Kendall and joined by, as always, Carl Dummler. Carl, how are you doing today? Broncos for Breakfast or building the I've been the doing so many Broncos for Breakfast shows <laughs> that um, I've – that's – my brain. Um, so shout out to Scott in the background here. But uh, what hat am I wearing? It says building the Broncos. Okay, there you go. Uh, this is this is building the Broncos Tuesday night at uh, I'm I am still Nick Kendall, right? And Carl Dummler, Carl, yeah. <laughs> good to see you. How was legs day? Leg day, uh, they're, they're a little limp. I, I tried to get into the shower and almost fell over. And oh man, I thought you know, I might be texting from the floor saying I can't make it tonight, but uh, no, I, I made it, I'm good and uh, feeling good. Well, good, that's good. I've had actually one. Probably one too many uh, listeners uh, let me know that, hey, I listened to you in the shower. It's like, you know what? <laughs> Thank you, I guess. That's, a, that's We really appreciate you. But no, we'll, we'll take whatever we can get. Uh, obviously, we got a lot of people in the house today. Michaela Parker, how you doing? Good to see you. We got Donald's in the house. Awesome to see Jay Kozad's in the house. Jamie's in the house. Uh, we got Roy's in the house. And the shop with Willie. Always great to see you, Willie. Hope you're doing well. Mike, uh, Mike Woodward's in the house. Evening peeps. Awesome to see. Michaela's really just uh, doing great in the chat. Michaela, we love you. You're doing great today. Good to see you. Good to see you in here, of course. Um, and uh, like I said, this is Building the Broncos. That's what the hat says. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Tuesday nights. Um, I am Nick Kendall with Carl Dummler. You can find us both on Twitter. Uh, myself at Nick Kendall MHH and Carl at Carl Dummler MHH. Uh, you can also follow us at BTB Football Pod and at Mile High Huddle. Uh, make sure you go to huddleuppod.com to get your swag on, get all your gear there. Uh, got, I mean, a hat for every show, right? That's that's what I collect hats. Uh, now it's even more. So uh, my wife's really stoked about that. Um, and uh, we also go join us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash mile high huddle and facebook.com forward slash mile high huddle pod. If Facebook's not your thing, but YouTube, uh, if you're not in a position to contribute to the show, uh, although you are all contributing by engaging in the community and, you know, in that way is great. But uh, subscribe, like, and share. Hit that alert button so you know when we go live. And, uh, Carl, I know we have the the big giveaway. The month is starting to wrap up, but we do have the Patrick Sertan jersey giveaway. So tell these people what they have a chance to do right now. Yeah, if you give on YouTube or Facebook, uh, you have an opportunity to to get a Patrick Sertan jersey. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, that guy, he's been lighting it up. I saw a stat today saying he hasn't given up any plays of 20-plus yards, which I would agree to disagree. I think he's given up one. Uh, and I, I know I, I wish they would clarify some of those things for PFF, but, uh, but even with that, I mean, the, the guy's been lights out everything you could ask for, for a, a top 10 pick for the Broncos looks like a future star. That's going to be here for a very long time. And so this is a Jersey that you do not want to miss out on. Uh, and like we said, you get an opportunity anytime that you give on YouTube, Facebook, you've got an opportunity to, to get your name in the hat and get an opportunity to win that. Yeah, and absolutely. I mean, coming off here right away, uh, Michaela Parker, one of our uh, number one supporters of the show. We appreciate you. Uh, they say, hi, fellas. Uh, we should open a pool and guess the day the coaches will get fired. Oh, man, I'd be about that. Put up a prize. Denver Broncos for life. I mean, uh, talk to Chad. He'd be the boss for that, but I definitely think it's possible. Um, I'll tell you right now, my money's going to go in after the season. I think that uh, that's probably the direction the Broncos are going. So, uh, you know, maybe I, maybe we can spin it as a positive. You know, they're loyal to the coach or something, but uh, it does feel like this is a team that's checking out and uh, an inevitability uh, at this point for a three so four I, team. That's sad, sad to say, but go ahead. Yeah, so I, I completely read that wrong. I've been hanging out at a, at a pool for six weeks, oh, and so I thought you. she meant like we should pool our money together, buy a pool, all of us hang out in the pool and talk about when coaches are going to be fired. I'm like, that sounds like a cool idea. Just everybody hang out. But uh, yeah, that's probably not what you meant there. But no, thank you, Michaela. Really appreciate that. And always great seeing you in the chat. Yeah, we also got Vincent coming in over on YouTube. Uh, $10. Thank you so much, Vincent. Uh, he says, don't worry, Carl. After seven games of watching Fangio, Fangio and Shermer, I'm a little limp also. God, <laughs> just had somebody say TMI earlier. Well, uh, <laughs> um, let's you deconstruct the entire team and start over. They all must go. And I see I'm a frustrated too, but uh, I don't think everybody has to go. There are some good players on here, right? Like, yep. uh, Miles Garrett was on that team that the Browns lost all those games, ended up having the number one overall pick and taking Baker Mayfield. Did Miles Garrett have to go after his rookie year? I mean, he can go on my team. He can come over here if they wanted to do that in hindsight. But uh, I don't think everybody has to go. But, uh, you know, it's it's a I wish they would just admit that this is not a super good team. And if they are not bad, then they're not good. You know, it's like it's, it's worse to be in the middle than actually bad. Uh, yeah. So, you know, uh, we can do 
Well, what can we do about it? Um, thank you so right. much for the comment, though, Vincent. Uh, Willie did not see your super. Um, but yeah, no, we have some people we want to give a shout out to with the uh, with all the YouTube and Facebook stuff that I know Scott is going to pull up here for us. Just a second, as long as I keep stalling long enough. And uh, Chad, Scott, okay. I'm, well, anyway, let's keep it going here. Um, we're going to talk about some Broncos moves, and then once those are all ready to go, we will pull those up. Um, the Broncos did make some moves today, and that's what the title is today. Probably the most shocking is that of uh, John Brown. And here we go <laughs> with the stars here. Um, people coming in. This is for uh, YouTube, of course. And we got our new contributors over on YouTube. 727 Mill, Broncos 007. Had a good 007 conversation this morning. Moron, who likes to dabble in Facebook a lot, but it was, came over to, on YouTube, so we appreciate you. Zegler, we got Vincent coming in, who Vincent just contributed again. Awesome to see Vincent. Daniel Garcia, uh, Brian Van Voorst, JJ, and Kiaka in the house is new. And also Broncos 16-1. And then we also have our stars coming in. Uh, we don't want to forget you guys. It's like going through the top 10 rankings in uh, college football, right? Like we were talking about some of the teams that had some good wins this week. Now we're going to the top, uh, the, you know, the Alabama of the list here. I mean, I guess I should <laughs> say the Georgia this year, Mark from Georgia, then Michaela Parker, Christy coming in. We got Naj, Seth Harmon, Chris Hernandez, Dale is DW there. Good to see you, Dale. Hopefully you're here. Brian Greenfield, Aaron Lynch, and Shane Daniels. And I know that Chad also has our stars behind the scenes there whenever he gets that up and running here we go 86 man we jumped a lot Whoa. that's awesome almost there to a quarter million we don't have a lot of time left but um that would be uh to be awesome to get and you guys if you get your stars in and the super chats or either or uh, you're gonna get a chance to win that uh patrick sertan jersey probably one of the broncos best players see we don't have to tear everything down keep patrick sertan because that jersey is <laughs> going to be valuable uh andrew lampy randy randy jones uh, Michael Ronquillo, Josh Hoyle, Shane Daniels. Always great to see Lawrence Rivera. I think he's in the house. Uh, Mama Moody coming in there. Tim Hoffman. That's a new name coming in. Peter Middleton, of course, and Howie Frickin' Day. So, uh, obviously, if you didn't get your name in there, you got a chance to still do it and win that Patrick Sertan jersey. Uh, and a lot of people in the house. Tim Durr in the house. Charlie Beagle. It's awesome to see. Um, Trickle had me silence on YouTube, so I have to come here. Oh, Charlie, you don't have. I'm not going to silence you as long as you're saying good things about Casey's Pizza in Iowa. We'll be okay. Um, stars <laughs> coming in. Travis Tarbox, a one of our big star givers here. Uh, evening, fellas. Hope our Broncos and Hawkeyes. There we go. Uh, get back on the winning track. Also, what are your thoughts on Kenny Pickett for our next quarterback? Carl, I know that you were out of the country, and it was hard enough to get NFL games for a bit, let alone college games and for the ACC in a down season. Have you watched any Kenny Pickett yet from Pittsburgh? I mean, gosh, three and four, I, and we're talking about college quarterbacks. So it's what's going yeah. on. Yeah. No, I, I've watched him uh, this last week. Obviously, had himself quite the game to, to take down – the, the dreaded Clemson team, not quite the dreaded team that they've been the last yeah. few years, but still, Hey, that that's a big victory for that program. Yeah. And, and Pickett is a big part of that. I mean, him coming back was a great decision on his part, but he is on the older end of quarterbacks. And we've talked about it on this show many times that quarterbacks kind of have these like three year windows of growth and, and Pickett's on the wrong end uh, of those, those years of growth. And yeah. uh, you know, Drew Locke was kind of the same way. He was a little bit of an older quarterback coming out of college. And so you kind of worry, has he maximized what he's going to be? And, and also I kind of worry of all those years before he wasn't that great. No, he wasn't. I mean, he was maybe a draftable quarterback, but we're talking day three kind of guy. So are you really going to use a first round pick after a guy has one great year? I, I'm not quite there. The, the tools are, are good enough but there's nothing that just stands out to you that says this guy is just going to be a star. And now I'm not saying you have to have the perfect tools to be a great quarterback by any means, but they help. <laughs> they make yeah. things a little bit easier. You don't have to be perfect on everything else to, to make it work. It makes the learning curve from college to NFL a little bit easier. Um, we have seen some not, not as athletic quarterbacks succeeding here. And we got Willie, man, you just, you're trying to hurt my feelings saying Casey's pizza is terrible. That's an insult on my people. Um, come on. They have great uh, breakfast pizza. That's honestly, it's the breakfast pizza is what I'm here for. Uh, man, nothing better than uh, having enjoying yourself a bit too much camping the night before. And like, we got no food. We're going to drive and get Casey's breakfast pizza. <laughs> um, but uh, no, that's, I'll, we'll, we'll flash you here to Willie, but that, that hurts. That's not very nice. Um, Kenny Pickett. I think he's a quarterback where he has enough arm talent, where he has enough athleticism. I think he's got a lot of heart. I mean, watching that Clemson game, you can see he's putting it all on his team's back, which you got to respect. Um, I don't know if he's going to make the Baker Mayfield climb. You're talking about a guy who was like barely, you know, day three draft eligible. That's what Baker Mayfield was coming into his uh, senior season, if you recall, maybe a late just outside the top 100, but he rose to one, one, 1.1. Yep. 1. 
Um, so there's still half the college season to go. He could move up for sure. Um, I was never a big fan of Baker Mayfield, Baker Mayfield that won one overall. Um, and I've even learned, I guess, more since then that tools early on can really help a quarterback. I mean, all the amazing quarterbacks right now in football, besides Tom Brady, seem to be these guys with just exceptional athletic traits, whether it be Kyler Murray, Justin Herbert, Patrick Mahomes, uh, Lamar Jackson, right? Like those guys. And now you do have the Joe Burrows also. So I'm not ready to bury Pickett. I guess it went a long way to get to it. I'm not ready to bury Pickett, but uh, I would not be comfortable taking him in the top 10 or in the top 20 right now of yeah. any draft class. But uh, this one is specifically, I think will get moved up because of the lack of guys at the top. Right. So and we got George coming in here with uh, stars uh, saying, it's a little thanks for the, your insight, guys. It does make it easier to deal with what's going on with the team. Well, George, thank you very much. If it's uh, Carl and I, unfortunately, started this building the Broncos, like when the Broncos actually got really bad. And like, oh, who wants to talk about Broncos draft when they're picking in the bottom end of the draft every year? Not yeah. the case since we started this show, um, unfortunately. But uh, still, you guys make it fun for us and easier for us with what's going on with the team because otherwise we'd just be spinning our wheels and getting frustrated. So we appreciate yeah. you guys a lot and we appreciate you, George. For sure. And you're, you're going to get us canceled now because they're going to be like, you guys started the downhill trend of this team by becoming a show. But uh, no, we really do appreciate it. And it, and it is. Yeah. And it's a lot of fun to talk to you guys. And it, it puts things into perspective mm -hmm. that as, as fun as it is to be able to cheer for a great team, it's so much more fun when you have a great fan base to rally around you and talk and, and just realize, I mean, we can talk life, we can talk everything here. And uh, we, we just really appreciate you guys pouring your time into us and, uh, and giving us this opportunity to talk with you guys. But we got Seth Harmon coming in here with the 1999 Super Chat. Really appreciate that, Seth. How many more consecutive losses till Vic is gone? Well, I, I would say the bye week. If the Broncos lose to Washington, then lose, is it Philly the game? I can't remember who's the next game, but then I think it's the bye week, right? Yeah. I you have you lose uh, the next you two. Three NFC East opponents, I think, in a row, right? Washington football team, Dallas, and then the Eagles. Okay. Yeah. That's how it is. So I, I think if we get to the bye week and the Broncos haven't won another game, it's pretty easy to see he's got it. He's going to be gone. Yeah. Uh, I really could see Peyton riding this ship out, especially with the lack of ownership. I mean, Ellis, it sounds like Elway and Ellis still have a heck of a lot of power in the decision making going on right now. And uh, they might just want to go down with their ship. Unfortunately, we got James coming in saying solar po power uh, baseball reference there. So hopefully that means good things for the uh, our Braves. I've co-adopted them with uh, Scott here. <laughs> I mean, nobody besides people in Houston want to see the uh, Astros win. Um, Charlie coming back in here too, saying, I think Kennedy dude brought the Falcon curse with him. <laughs> hopefully not. Um, this team seemingly like it was a uh, curse well before Scott came over. Mm -hmm. Um, so what can you do? Um, let's get to the matters of business though. Well, not the matters of business, but the main topic at hand, Broncos made some moves today. The number one being John Brown was released. Um, the Broncos did not call him up, um, from the practice squad, uh, to, or I, I think it's the wrong terminology. They did not make him one of the active 53, um, yep. with Jerry Judy being taken off of IR. And with that, John Brown asked for a release from the team. Is my understanding. I think Mike Cliss put that out there specifically. Um, so the Broncos granted his request. And now John Brown, Brown uh, his era, over as quickly as it started, essentially. Yeah. I mean, it was always going to be an uphill battle for him to be anything big for this team. I mean, yeah. if a player is on the market at this point in the season, they're not a good player. You're not finding this diamond in the rough that all of a sudden turns the tables of how your franchise is going. Not like, I, I like okay. yeah, not likely. Not Every likely. once in a while, maybe you'll find a guy. But <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, I, I think of like Brandon Marshall when the Broncos brought him the the linebacker, not the wide receiver. Yeah. You know, he was kind of a late season addition. Todd Davis is another that kind of came over that was on a practice squad. Mm -hmm. Both of them became very good players for the Broncos. So I'm not saying it can't happen, but it's just pretty rare, especially for a 32 year old guy that is known for speed. And speed is one of those things that just falls off a cliff in a hurry. And he's not a special teams guy. So you add Jerry Judy to this list that pushes him back to fourth, fifth wide receiver. You need those guys to be special teams guys. Yep. And, and so it's understandable. This was kind of a mutual thing that I think works out for, for both teams, both sides. 
Yeah, it's unfortunate. Um, I think I haven't gone back and watched the all 22 yet of the Browns game because it was painful enough the first time. I don't know if I want to subject myself to that to that. And if uh, Brown was going to stick around, I was going to highlight him a little bit and watch him. Um, un- unfortunately, or fortunately, I guess maybe that didn't happen. So if when I do go back, I think I'll watch uh, Garrett Bowles versus Miles Garrett. Um, but uh, that's, uh, you know, thanks, John Brown, for uh, all you did for this team and organization for all all the two games you were here. And uh, good luck going forward. Um, <laughs> Lawrence Rivera coming in here with the stars. What about Mitch Trubisky? Oh God, help me, Carl. Um, is he up for grabs? We know he can make a coach look good. Um, Mitch Trubisky, I think it was Daniel Jeremiah recently had a segment talking about him saying, uh, wherever Brian Dabble goes, I think Mitch Trubisky is going to come with him. And people are seeing how bad, uh, that Chicago team is independent of Mitch Trubisky. Maybe Trubisky mm-hmm. got the short end of the stick there and he'll get a better chance a second time around. Uh, what, do, what do you think there about any of that dabble coming with Trubisky, giving a shot at Trubisky, what kind of deal he might get uh, given he's young and still has some perceived upside, et cetera, et cetera. If it means we get dabble as head coach. Yeah. I could on, honestly get on board with that. If dabble believes in him and can build an offense around what his skill set is, like he did with Josh Allen, please go for it. I'll, I'll take that risk. You know, if, if it fails, hey, you got a great quarterback draft, possibly the, the year after that. Usually, if you have a really bad quarterback draft, the next one looks a lot better. Uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. But um, Trubisky, th- there's some things to like. He has some decent tools for sure. But there are some plays at Chicago that were not the coach's fault. Guys wide open, nobody within 10 yards of him. And I mean, Trubisky's staring at the wide receiver. They have the all 22 where he's looking straight at the wide receiver and won't throw it. Yeah. And and th- there's plenty of those kind of plays. So like I said, if it gets dabbled, that's the only way that I'm really good with that kind of decision. For me, it comes down to like what kind of contract he's looking for and what kind of year long co- years long commitment uh, he is. If you're bringing him in and he's like competing with Drew Locke next year for the starting job or something, you understand that, hey, unfortunately, maybe another transition here unless we get lightning in the bottle with one of these quarterbacks. Um, and being honest with the fans, they'd never do that because that's just admitting, you know, where you're at. Uh, but um, I might be interested in that. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll see. Um, it, I guess it could be worse, but it feels like a lot of the same. Um, mm-hmm. But I at least the same has been a short term commitment. And you didn't trade, you know, a two and a four and extra capital for Sam Darnold, who looks terrible. You know, like, <laughs> right. at, at least these ones are not high, big investments where they're flaming out. Uh, yep. Michael Ronquillo, uh, good evening, Nick and Carl from Bron- building the Broncos. Good. Go Broncos. Blech, can't read. Good evening, Broncos country. Go Broncos. Michael, I'll do better next time with that one. I go, blech. Good to see you, Michael. We love you. Um, we got Kiaka coming in too. So you nailed that one. Uh, Aloha, my guys. I'm super pumped about young. I'm calling it now. He's our starting inside linebacker next Sunday as well. Um, I mean, if you traded for him, I granted it was not a lot, but, uh, they obviously liked something that he's bringing. Mm-hmm. He knows he should know the scheme because Brandon Staley, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, are you excited about uh, Young? I know Eric was kind of uh, being a, a rainy cloud about it, but I mean, <laughs> Curtis Robinson's gone. That's another move the Broncos made, and uh, Kenny Young is in. I think that's a uh, a big positive, and it's no disrespect to Robinson, but yikes. <laughs> well, here's what I'll say. Last week was some of the worst off-ball linebacker play I've seen from the Broncos in a very long time. It, yeah, it was bad. I remember what, the Vic Fangio's first game where Corey Nelson – was starting at linebacker. That, okay. that was one that was like, Oh my God, what are we doing? Yeah. Uh, okay. But- <laughs> it's close between these two. I mean, when you have third and seven where, you know, you're absolutely, they're running it there at the end of the game. Yeah. And our linebackers hit the wrong holes. I mean, the entire game, they were hitting the wrong holes. They were over pursuing, leaving the backside cut every single time. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it was like the easiest thing. every single time. Like they're just going to cut it back. Boom. Big 12 yard run. And uh, it, it was <laughs> it was hard to watch. So young can't be much worse than what we saw last week. So I I'm, I'm fine with the pickup. I'm fine with the trade. It's late round picks. You're just throwing something out there, seeing if it works. And he knows the scheme, like you said. So it's not a huge transition for him. Yeah. I, I'm good with it. Yeah, and it was such a negligible, negligible price that, uh, you know, might as well take a shot. And hey, again, talking lightning in the ball, bottle of the quarterback position. Maybe get it at linebacker, maybe young clicks and you pay him for a, you know, a song, song and a dance really cheap this off season. And you got some yep. stability at the linebacker position because uh, you are set to lose Alexander Johnson and Josie Jewell as well. I wish young did have another year left of like rookie cost control. That would make me feel really good having that on the roster for 2022. But, you know, what can you do? 
Yeah, I don't right. think you're getting in for the price you did, if that's the case. Uh, we right. got Deshaun coming in here saying, why shouldn't we trade everything we have to get Watson? We're never going to win without a quarterback, right? Oh, man, this is a complicated answer. I mean, it sounds like, A, Deshaun Watson is not interested in coming to Denver. He has a no-trade clause, and uh, he doesn't want Denver. He wants Miami or somewhere warmer. So that's number one. Number two, everything else that's going on, I mean, that's really complicated. I'm not versed enough to have an educated opinion on that. So I'll, you know, maybe it's a coward's way out, but I'm not going to give one. Um, it does sound like though, that the Miami dolphins and the Houston Texans um, have a deal in place that revolves around some overtures from the league about what would happen if he does is found guilty. Uh, and that the owner of the Miami dolphins want resolved before the trade goes through. But that means Deshaun Watson would have to admit guilt, I guess in a sense settle, which he's claiming that he didn't do. So he doesn't want to settle for that to go through. So it's, it's complicated. It's messy. I'm watching, uh, in, very interested, I guess, just to see what happens. But, uh, God, I'm, my eyes are on Seattle. Like what is, what, what do they want for Russell Wilson? Because that's a, that's a young quarterback. Who's still pretty good. Who can do some things that, uh, isn't going to embarrass you, I guess, in that way. He, he's corny as hell. Don't get me wrong. He's mm -hmm. very corny, but, uh, <laughs> you know, you're not you're limited. Him an issue. Yeah. God, um, <laughs> the worst commercial ever. Yeah. Oh I, man. I, I'm with I, you. I, really, I was a big Watson guy before everything came out, but it's a, uh, it's tough, right? It, it's tough to see that. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm with you. I, I'm interested to see what happens with Tua if he mm -hmm. does get traded. I know there's been some rumors Broncos are interested, no. uh, but sounds like Washington's kind of leading that. Maybe a three-team trade thing go on. That's mm -hmm. very rare in the NFL, but this could yeah. be one of those rare opportunities because it's a rare situation. But uh, yeah. all right, we got Nathan coming in here with the five dollar super. Really appreciate that. Uh, it says, good evening, everyone. Times like this make the championship seasons much sweeter. This too shall pass my brothers and sisters in blue and orange. Yeah, I, I agree. I, there's still times I go back and watch that 2015 season. Yep. Just just to remember what it felt like to, to cheer for a team that's winning. You know, I love going back to the 2013 season, getting to watch great offensive play and putting up lots of points and seeing guys wide open, scheme working well quarterback that knows what they're doing you know sometimes you got to go back and just look just go back to the good old days man you sound like a uh, nebraska corn husker fan there talking about <laughs> like the, the good old days uh, that's when right we used, to, used to be a powerhouse that i feel you nathan um but i'm also gonna throw a little cold water on this um and this goes back to our previous comment about deshaun watson and getting him the broncos things are gonna get better eventually right we haven't been in this rut that long right it's only been six years since winning the super bowl um but Unfortunately, this is a division that has some damn good quarterbacks that are not close to their age of falling off, right? Like you're talking about a decade plus. So uh, I guess one positive is those teams aren't going to be looking for the quarterback. And with those teams having quarterbacks, maybe the Broncos will have multiple shots at the top of the draft to get a quarterback and hopefully right the ship there and take advantage of that when that comes. But um, it's going to be tough. It's just, it just is going to be tough. Um, so yep. hopefully it'll get better, but we do, they can't take away those rings from us as much as they would try. Um, <laughs> Ethan coming in here, Ethan damn it's uh, $5 over on YouTube. Thank you so much, Ethan. Don't recognize the name, but welcome into mile high huddle uh, with the way the season has gone. I'm already ready for the off season to see what moves Peyton and his guys will make go Broncos. Ooh, I'd go Astros. I got you, you paid, you paid the super. I'm going to read it. <laughs> it wasn't inflammatory or anything, but uh, it felt might, dirty coming out. Yeah, you might have Scott reach through the screen to you here pretty soon. Uh, but can, uh, he mute, can he mute a host? <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I'm with you. I mean, we always love the off season. Obviously, that's one of our favorite yeah. times. Uh, but I, I am interested to see how much the ownership situation plays into that, because good chance owner is not established until March. So you're going to have to make quarterback or, or you're going to have to make coaching decisions. You're maybe going to have to make mm -hmm. some free agency decisions with different players that could be hitting the market for the Broncos. Uh, so there, there's some things in play there that I wonder how that's going to play out of how aggressive can they be with new ownership coming in? Yeah, no, it's, it's really curious given how much money the Broncos have, how many guys they're losing um, in the direction, like how involved the owner is going to be. You know, it's just really, it's a really messy situation. It's a big reason that I'm like as bad as it is, you know, I'm not looking overlooking 2022, but like my eyes are like, okay, what can we do to be competing in 2023? Cause that's when like, there should be a little stability. You should have some idea. And I know that's goddamn two draft, two off seasons from now. Like I, and I know that, but I just think that that's 
the Broncos keep trying to take these like shortcuts or these one season solutions. They're not working. Maybe you should try a multi-year plan and at least like bring, bring the fan base in, you know, to quit, quit lying to us. That's yeah. the biggest thing. It's like, I don't believe you. How, how can anybody believe you when you're selling us this stuff? Joe Flacco is still elite. Get out of here. I, I don't know. Um, Chase Wellner, $2 over on YouTube saying, uh, who would have thought Cincinnati would be scarier than Washington football team? Carl, what is this? Do you look, do you get anything from this? Um, do any lessons learned here from was from this Cincinnati being better than Washington football team? Well, I mean, Washington making the playoffs, they made it in a bad division. So you kind of knew yeah. regression was probably going to happen. Yeah. I mean, they, they brought in the beard for their quarterback and he has, really high moments and really low moments as a quarterback. So it was going to be hard for them to make the playoffs with a, um, a number one seeding uh, kind of uh, schedule that they had Cincinnati. I mean, Joe Burrow coming back, he kind of wondered how he would be. They added to the weaponry. I, I mean, Joe Burrow is one of those guys. You, you, like you said earlier, you listed off all those guys who have all these athletic things. And then you got Joe Burrow. And yeah. so he's he's got he's one of those guys that makes you have to really question a little bit of your scouting. Joe's like a good really- athlete. Joe's a good athlete, man. He was a, a really good uh, high school basketball player. I think he was a dual listed as a dual threat coming out of college as well. Um, so Did you see the picture of him with the cigar and the belly. I, yeah, and- <laughs> not like Mac Jones out there, but um, okay, that's yeah, true. No. But <laughs> he can make some things with his legs. And I'm not saying he, I'm not saying he's like the worst athlete, and but I mean compared to those other guys, you know, doesn't yeah. have the biggest arm. Like I said, not the fastest guy out there, but I mean, he, he's smart. He's hardworking. That's easy to see. And, and, yeah. And accurate. And uh, when you got all those pocket. things. Oh my God. He's so good in the pocket. Sorry. Just yep. to, not to go off on Joe Burrow love here. Um, I think the biggest <laughs> lesson here is um, you, you don't in an off season, you can talk about how great your defense looks, blah, 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 blah. Until you see it on the field, it doesn't mean shoot. Right. And uh, you know, it does matter. Quarterbacks. Uh, that's, that is way more predictive season to season. So, uh, who would have thought this Broncos and Washington football team would be as bad as they are given all the off season praise, you know, nobody, but, um, you can't really depend on defenses until you see them out there. Right. Like, I think that's my biggest lesson here. You, we didn't know that Broncos 2015 defense would be what they were until it was obvious on the field. And right. this year, like, Oh, they could be as good. Not even close. Um, so I just, I'm not betting on defenses going forward. I think that's the biggest lesson here. Michael coming in. Great to see Broncos country here on building the Broncos with Nick and Carl go Broncos. Go Michael. How's that sound? Let's, let's get a go Michael in here. Also another friend of the show, uh, Muhammad Badri saying St. Carl and Braun in the house. Good to see you. Uh, we got Naj coming in now too. $20. Hey brothers, if the Broncos end up with a top five pick, do you see a quarterback worthy of being drafted that high? If not, who would be the ideal pick regardless of the position? If the Broncos are picking top five, this is going to maybe, upset some people, but, um, I've, I still don't think it like looking hindsight, Quentin Nelson, top five, a guard, maybe not, but in this class, you cannot be picky about the specific, specific position. You need difference makers. You need guys that have a chance to, with a bust in, in, uh, Canton, I almost said a uh, Cooperstown wrong sport world series mind. Um, but, uh, I don't think the position matters as much. So like if the best player on the board, if you're picking five is Kyle Hamilton and you like Caden Stearns, you obviously like Justin Simmons. I don't give a flying, you know what, get, get the best player. You need difference makers. Cause you do not yep. have enough. Um, so I guess long answer there, who would be ideal? Kayvon Thibodeau. I mean, he's going to go 1.1 overall. Broncos are not as bad. Broncos are bad. They're not lions bad. They're not Houston bad. They're not jets bad. They're not going to yeah. get Kayvon Thibodeau. Um, yeah, he, he's one of those guys. Miles Garrett. I'd still have above him. Oh yeah. But he's, he's not he's much. Young. He's not much below that in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, he just dominates. He's got ability to bend around the edge. He's got power. He's got ability with timing the snap. Uh, he's got actual pass rushing moves. He's not just an athlete. Part of yeah. miles Garrett's problem was he was more athlete than football player coming out a little bit. Oh, but Took what an a- athlete. <laughs> yeah, I know it's true. Now that the football skills have caught up with the athlete. I mean, he's yeah. just a freak, uh, yeah. but uh, yeah, that, that would be the ideal player when you add him to this kind of roster, you know, to that defensive roster, he, he's roster. one of those guys. Yeah. Any roster, you know, <laughs> he kind of reminds me of uh, even 2013 when Von Miller got suspended, then got hurt, all those kind of things. Those like five games that he actually played. The defense was a top 10 defense, even with all their other injuries that 2013 season with mm-hmm. Von Miller without him, yeah. they were a bottom five defense. I mean, that's how yeah. big of a difference Von Miller in his prime made. Yep. Thibodeau could be that kind of guy for you. 
Yeah, he's uh, he's amazing. Broncos won't get a chance at him. Uh, they're probably picking right now. If I had to guess, I'd be saying somewhere between eight and fourteen, which is probably not what you want. But uh, you know, we'll see. Um, a lot of season to go. You know, maybe they still make the playoffs. God, who knows? The, the, the crazy <laughs> things happen. Um, but uh, other guy for me, top five. Um, I don't know if you've gotten a chance to watch much uh, Big Ten yet, but there's two edge rushers in the Big Ten that I'm a big fan of, um, in Aiden Hutchinson and George Karloftis, and I would be ecstatic about either of them. I think they're both uh, decade long edge rushers. And given how poor Malik Reed's looked, given Bradley Chubb's injury history and last year of control next year and Von Miller seemingly like he's not going to be back after this year. Uh, those are two guys that I'd look at just to get some core players on that position. Speaking of core, man, Michaela Woo! coming in uh, big time, man. We thank you so much. Uh, $50 yeah. over on YouTube. Uh, any ideas how to save the season? Hate giving up. I feel getting rid of the coaches is the only way. Uh, yeah. What do you think, Carl? Do you think co- getting rid of the coaches is the only way? I, I don't think so. I think there's some some adjustments that you could make. Uh, okay, so a few things that I would do. Yeah, Vic Fangio. I, I've tried to support the guy for the most part. I, I've liked a lot of his scheme on defense, but he's gone away from his scheme. He's tried to kind of make all these pieces work and change things up, and it's not working. Either get back to your scheme and what you do and just say, to heck with trying to get all these other guys on the field, just make my scheme work. Or Vic Fangio, get out of here. Let's see what we can do. Um, I would give Mike Shula some play calling ability and and let him go see what he can do. And getting Jerry Judy back is going to help. Obviously, getting Albert Okwebenon back here is going to help on the offense. And, and then I maybe make a couple changes on the offensive line to see if we can maybe get a little something more, a little more power going for the run game. I know Vic Fangio talked about how they worked on first and second down today. Yeah. Well, part of the problem is the offensive line is getting zero push for the run game. So go get some of your bigger boys out there. Moody. I know he's on COVID list, I guess. Uh Oh, you said the word. Oh, I'm sorry. The sick bug. (laughs) Sick bug. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Don't hurt me. YouTube uh, or whoever you are, but, uh, (laughs) uh, but no, I, so we'll see on him, but Quinn Miners. He is one of your few guys that has really shown just incredible attitude on the field. Not perfect by any means. I mean, he he never was going to be as a rookie, but man, that guy, when he's on the field, he is, he's a monster. And uh, so I I would find a way to get him on the field. Even I know a lot of people are Dalton Reisner fans and I've been a big Dalton Reisner fan, but he hasn't been great this year. Lloyd Cushenberry, you know, maybe this is where you make the move of uh, moving Glasgow over to center. And, yeah. and just, you know, I wish for these 10 days that we heard that that was kind of something they were thinking about because yeah. I think Glasgow is better as a center than he is a guard sometimes, but yeah, th- those would be a few moves that I would try. Um, and, and then just, uh, you really gotta, the, the big thing is you just gotta have a heart to heart coaches, players, everybody, and just say, we all got to get on the same page. We got to work through our issues of whatever we've had going on. I know, Coaches and players have had a disconnect going on. It sounds like Fangio has gotten into a lot of yelling matches with players. This is the time where Fangio has just got to humble himself and say, you know what? I've messed up, guys. I've not been a good coach. I've not been you know, listening to you guys. I've not been doing this, this, and this. And, and just get the players' respect back. You do that, and maybe they trust you. Maybe something good could happen there. Uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, it's frustrating um, for sure. I... The Broncos right now don't have enough. They can't get home with four consistently. And you also lost your best blitzer with Alexander Johnson. So now you cannot manufacture manufacture pressure the same as could when you had him. So I don't really know what the scheme or the schematic options are also because you're running such a match quarter zone heavy scheme. It takes buy-in from the safeties and everybody communicating and not trying to do jobs outside of the scope of what they're asked to do on a given play. And you are not seeing that as much. So, um, you have this long week, I guess it's a little bit late for this now, but, um, I would, I hope that they went to the players and said, okay, right now this isn't working the last four games defensively. We've been a bottom five defense in the league. That is inexcusable for the talent that we have. And I put that on me as a coach. I want fans, you to take some God darn responsibility, you know, point, point at yourself when it's not working, not at the players or your other coaches, right? Be better. Um, but, uh, I want to go to the co- players get the buy in there. What do you guys want to do? What do you think is working? How can I put you in the best situation? So right. that way th- these guys feel like they have some ownership 
in what's out there. Cause right now, I mean, I thought they had a little more heart in that Cleveland game, but it looked like they gave up against the, the Raiders and that's just unacceptable. I mean, if you're going to get beat, I've already, you know, I'm ready for it being a, not a good team this year with the injuries and just everything going on, but not to, to give up like that on the field, you, you can't do it. So uh, thank you very much for the, uh, the comment. Mikhail. I, I don't think there is an easy, uh, simple solution. And I don't think firing Vic Fangio is going to result in anything besides the inevitable, which is the wheels falling off the bus and us trying to figure out where we go from here. Um, but, uh, you know, we'll see. Uh, we got the Sean coming back in saying, uh, do you guys watch Tim Jenkins on YouTube? He breaks down the film every week. Pat Shermer being calling fire. Teddy It's just limited as to what he can do. Um, so he's saying Pat Shermer is limited based on Teddy. I would agree that, uh, Teddy is, uh, Teddy, Teddy deserves responsibility and he'll be the first one to tell you he struggled the last four games. Uh, he yep. said he was playing at 70, 75% in that Cleveland game. And the Broncos were scared to death schematically in that game, rightfully so, given how good Clowney and McDowell and uh, Malik Garrett have been uh, with an injured quarterback in your offensive line struggling. But uh, I like Tim. Uh, Tim's funny. We had a little bit of back and forth early on because uh, he said some things and I was, you know, he, he thought that I had way more power than I have. Tim, I, I am just a, a fool up here having a good time. Don't take me seriously. I don't. Um, but uh, if Trey Lance is good, then Tim will never hear the end of it for me. That's all I'll say. Yeah. Uh no, I, I'm with you. I, I've I've watched him stuff, and I appreciate what he he brings to the table. Obviously, a guy that's been in the league and knows what he's watching, and and he's very very smart and communicates it well to to fans. And and I agree. I, I think there are times where Pat Shermer has done a great job. There's other times where he has been very predictable and exactly what he's going to do. Yeah. Second and long. Oh, we're going to run the football straight up the middle. You know, th- that's yeah. that's on Pat Shermer. Every team knows that's exactly what he's going to do every single time. Yep. And uh, the, the, he just doesn't break from that tradition. I and it's it's been proven if it is second and long, and you make the decision to run, you've pretty much given up and just said we're just we're going to have third and long. I mean, that's what you've decided as a team. You've yeah. given up a play, and uh, and so th- that's the one thing that just really bothers me with Shermer of some of the things that he does. And then sometimes when you know. Your quarterback is is struggling with injuries and not limited. Is limited and is yeah, in and himself. Yeah, right. And you know sometimes you are still spreading things out and making him have to run around and do some things. You know that's again on some coaching. Uh, I'm not saying that Teddy doesn't deserve fault in some of the things that he's done. Like I said, I mean they, they all everybody has to take ownership in what they've done. Uh, you know, Cortland Sutton has dropped a couple plays that he shouldn't have played, shouldn't have dropped. Teddy has missed some plays that he shouldn't have missed. Offensive line has just been bad. I mean, real bad. Teddy's getting murdered back there. And you're just and, talking offense right now. The defense. Yeah. Being, I mean, I there's a website that has some sliders on it and data where you can filter for like uh, garbage time. And I did it for defenses that were um, win probability of either 90 over 90 percent or under 10 percent. So pretty much the game is over. You either have already won or have already lost and uh, the Broncos, when you do that for 10 to 90 and 20 to 80 have not only a a bad defense, they're the worst defense in the entire NFL over the last four weeks Um, is some of that. The, and we got stars coming here from Randy Jones. Good to see you, Randy. Thank you so much. Um, It's yeah, it's unfortunate, but um, I don't know how much of it is the defense finally giving up on the coaching staff. Is it the injuries? Is it this defense being deflated? by uh, the offense, you know, here we go again. We can't, we have to play perfect to have a chance to win, um, which, you know, all it's probably all of it. You know, everybody's yep. looking for a one person solution. Oh, if we fire Shermer, everything will be fixed. Oh, if we play Drew Locke, everything will be fixed. This is, it's way more complicated and multifaceted than that. Unfortunately, I wish it was that simple. Um, I guess it is as simple as if you get like Aaron Rodgers playing back there, a lot of things will look fixed, <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, you know, uh, we have what we have right now, and hopefully we'll get uh, get going in the right direction. Personally, right. I don't think either of these quarterbacks are gonna, who even you're going to be starting next year, let alone 2023. Um, but, you know, that's not many. Not every single team has a franchise quarterback. Right. And we're unfortunately one of those ones right now that is uh, wandering the desert. Well, Michael comes in with a, a good idea, at least a, a beginning idea of something the Broncos could do a little bit more of, of run the ball with Javante Williams. Thank you for the stars, Michael. Uh, more because he is hard to tackle in space and always moving his feet for extra yards. Go Broncos. You know, th- that has been, uh, whenever it's a bad season, I think there's always those little silver linings that you can look for and say, hey, this is what you can like. This rookie class, there, there's been a lot th- to like about this rookie class. 
Patrick Sertan is playing like a true starting cornerback that's going to be here for a long time. Javante Williams looks like a franchise running back. I mean, uh, I, is that even a thing <laughs> in this era? It, I, I think it is. I, I think when you can I look at a guy yeah. and say, hey, I want him to have a majority of the carries in a game. I, I can see that moving forward where you want to give this guy the ball 20 times, 25 times in a game and and let him really control it. I mean, his ability to break tackles and make some big plays, even though he's not a speedster. Yeah. You know, it, it's nice to have on the offense. And, yeah. you know, looking at the rest of the draft, you know, Quinn Miners looking like a guy that could really become something for you in the future, a real trend uh, tone setter on the offense. Uh, that, that's nice to see. You got Caden Stearns, who's made a few plays that that's been kind of a nice little bright spot for the Broncos. Um, I'm trying to think of, of the rest of draft class, if, if, it, if they've made any kind of impact, but those are the main guys that I can, can yeah. point towards and say, Hey, you know, this is something you can build on. Yeah. Eric's killing me here. Stop the quick fix, but please go get Aaron Rodgers. Uh, I think the question is here, can you get Aaron Rodgers? All right, I'm all in. If the answer is no, then it's the rebuild. That's that's the fork in the road. Um, so or speak, Russell Wilson. The way I look at it. Or, or Russell Wilson. Yep, that's yep. Uh, I agree with that one. Um, and I'm here with Jamie to draft O-line again and again and again. Um, definitely an option. Uh, I, I'm not as much. I mean, have, did you watch? Have you watched these Broncos last three games? Has anybody on that defensive front looked like somebody that you want to hang your hat on? Even Von Miller? I mean, Draymond Jones is flash, but he looks complimentary. You don't really have a an alpha there on that uh, defensive line right now. So uh, give me the best defensive front or offensive front player right now. And uh, let's get tougher because these Broncos teams have looked really soft. Maybe that's part of the coaching. Maybe that's something else. Um, maybe that's this team using almost, I mean, how many draft resources have they used recently on trench players really out of the last uh, three draft classes, like the top two round picks. The only one is, Dalton Reisner. They haven't taken a tackle since they haven't even drafted a tackle since they drafted Garrett Bowles. Um, so stuff like that is, uh, you know, got to get better there. Maybe they need to invest in a little bit more of the old school stuff with the trenches. Yeah. Unfortunately they hired a, a GM that loves the back end football. Yeah. But he also understands that you need to invest in the defensive front. They used a lot of picks on the defensive line. Um, then they, they got lucky getting Daniel Hunter and Everson Griffin when they did, but still those are, they kept those, they paid those guys and also the Vikings, not this year, but last year wheels fall off the, fell off the bus there for their, uh, defensive tackles. So I, I don't think he'd put them in that vulnerable of a situation. And we got some Iowa Hawkeye stuff going in here. Go Hawks, the Iowa sports review. Um, that's, uh, I I'm about it. Um, I also saw with Michaela saying that, uh, they were volunteer to play quarterback going forward. So uh, let's do it. Michaela for quarterback. Why not? Heck, let's get her that. Let's get him that uh, that bonus check, right? And if we can get enough, enough games in the league to be a vested veteran, now we're really cooking with grease. Yeah. Um, but uh, I have to say some people talking Linderbaum in here now. That'd be fun. I don't, I mean, you guys, this is, this is something here. This is a, just a f- football philosophy talk in general. Um, how good is you Iowa people know this actually, maybe not, but um, Iowa has one really amazing top 15 player. One of the best center prospects in the last decade in Tyler Linderbaum, the Iowa Hawkeyes offensive line is bad over overall across the board. It's not going to take one guy. It's never going to be about one guy on the offensive line. It's going to be about the collective. So even if you invest in a guy this season, doesn't mean it's going to fix the offensive line because it takes legit seven guys that you need out there that you trust that can rotate and uh, step in. So um, it would be great to invest in that offensive line, but it is still going to take time. It's a constant investment, right? It's like, it's like putting money in your retirement fund, you know, like you have to just do a little bit constantly. Um, and hopefully it'll add up, but, uh, it's not going to be a fix all. Yep. And you're Charles, right. And you got to start somewhere. I, not a bad call, Charles. Yeah. And, and it is, it's hard to keep an offensive line together in today's NFL, you know, with you've got limited number of years that you can put a group together and trying to get them all on the same page. Usually takes a couple of years. And I mean, we're seeing even with having Mike Munchak as the offensive line coach. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I, I'll support that guy till the end of the age because I, th- I still think he's a great coach. But obviously, with this team, he's just not getting it across to him what they need to be doing or something's not clicking quite with him this time of year. And uh, even, even Garrett Bowles has kind of taken a little bit of a step back this season. And that's been a little bit tough to watch that. You know, this guy that everybody was all excited about after last season, and now he's not contributing to you. Shelby Harris is not contributing like he was last year. Uh, You know, Justin Simmons, how many times has he been out of position this year? Man, there's just been some times where you're just wondering, like, what 
one, I wonder what's called on the field, and I wonder what the players are actually doing on the field. Yep. Are, are, are the coaches messing up and they're calling and saying, hey, I want you, even though you're the single high safety, I want you to play to the short side of the field? Mm-hmm. Or are you calling it where, hey, man, you've got to cover the deep middle of the field here? Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know where the disconnect is. That's part of the problem here is, is unfortunately we're kind of on the outside looking in on some of that. Yep. And uh, there has been some rumors of the safeties. Um, I wouldn't say yelling, uh, but getting into it with Fangio, some heated discussions about going on. At least I, I, I'm i grasping for straws here. At least I guess that shows that they care. Right. And they uh, they want to get better and they want to be put in the situation. And, uh, you know, frustrations boiling out, which is better than apathy in there. That team is still at least appearing to fight. Um, but, uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see what happens here. The Broncos did have a couple more moves. Obviously, the, they waived uh, Curtis Robinson, um, which was the linebacker. You know, I just I feel bad for him. Right. Like it was so obvious that he did not belong out there and they targeted yeah. him and uh, probably never should have been in that situation. I guess he got a play. Right. His name's on a jersey. He'll always have that. Um, but uh, man did not belong. That was unfortunate to see him uh, do that. And also the Broncos waved uh, Demaria Crockett. Um, running back from North Dakota State, off the top of my head, I think um, so. been been on and off the team for a number of years now in preseason and whatnot. So I wouldn't be shocked if he was back again <laughs> in a week. Uh, and the Broncos, interestingly, um, we talked about it. Um, Moody going on the sick bug list. Uh, Purcell's not probably not going to play this week. Vaughn is day to day. Here's just a news information dump for you guys. Um, the two that interest me though, positives: uh, Jonas Griffith returning off of IR. Um, he was the Special teams ace slash linebacker the Broncos traded for from the Niners. You know, it's a warm body that can play the linebacker position. Maybe that'll help, uh, even if it's not sp- special team specific for him. And the other one is uh, Albert Okwebenam is returning to practice. Maybe he'll go this week, maybe he won't. But um, getting at least a little bit healthy on offense. And, oh, yeah, Jerry Judy, supposed to be back. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, and, and I look back at that that Giants game where they had both those guys healthy of Albert Okwebenam and, and Jerry Judy. And, and that was the best the offense looked, obviously, this season. Uh, just And, you know, I, I would say when Oka Webinom gets healthy, wouldn't surprise me to see him as the starting tight end. No. Noel Fant hasn't been great, and we've seen a better connection between uh, Bridgewater and Oka Webinom th- so far this season. I know he had the bad fumble. Um, and then, of course, Jerry Judy and, and Bridgewater have had a great connection this entire offseason, and we're having a great connection in that first game before he went down. Yeah, he was and, and so 180 yards or something. Yeah, so those two could really change the course of this season. Just getting those two back if they're fully healthy. All right, well, we got Naj coming in here with a, a twenty dollars super chat. Really appreciate that, Naj. Always love seeing you in here. He says, "Bros, from your knowledge of Fangio, is he the type of human capable of humbling himself and taking ownership of his mistakes and going to the players?" Well, I, I would say what we've seen so far this year, no. He really has put it mostly on the players. They're not doing their job. That's that's pretty much been his his mantra this entire season. And it's very frustrating to hear that he's taken almost zero ownership of the problems of this team so far this year. Yeah, it, that is really frustrating. Um, now he's starting to you know, talk about the offense as well, not getting it done, and his players not getting it done. And you know what? Watching the game, I will say to Vic Fangio's credit, um, scheme-wise, some people have not been executing. Right. But it's guess what? It's still on you, coach. You got to figure out a way to motivate those guys to execute your scheme. Uh, So even if it's not working out, if, oh, they didn't go out there and do what they were supposed to. Well, then figure out how you can get them in a position to do what they're supposed to or to change what they're supposed to do. So that way they're going out there and doing it's, yeah, you know, it's not uh, it's not as again, not as simple as just firing Fangio. It fixes everything. But Fangio, you know, going out like this, you know, talking about the players not executing and et cetera, et cetera. Um, is disappointing. Yeah, it's just disappointing for me because that's not what you want to hear from your coach. I know that coach speak, uh, Scott likes to say it's, you know, just BS, it's blind. Um, and I appreciate that. One always makes me laugh. But uh, there is, like, I would say a, a certain protocol or behavior that you expect from your coach where maybe this is maybe an old school, but the buck stops here. You know, I yeah. got to be better. Put it on me. I didn't put those guys in a position to succeed. They played their heart out out there, um, et cetera, et cetera. Even if he doesn't believe it, you need yeah. to go out there and front that face for your players. And so they know that they have your back or you right. have their back. They I don't think, think one of the, they don't think that there's no way they think that. Yeah. I, I think one of the greatest coaches speeches ever was the Oklahoma state coach that uh, he's like, I'm a man, I'm 40. 
You know, yeah, but- stop yelling at my quarterback for throwing interceptions, those kind of things. He's like, put it on me. This is on me. Come after me. And and I wish we'd see Fangio just do that once. I think the players would be like, okay, this is our coach again. Yeah. I, I really think they, they'd get behind some of that. Uh, but right now, it just doesn't seem like that's the, the case. And uh, I'd say the only coach that I've seen actually take responsibility, and I know some people are going to be mad about this, but McMahon. He's the only guy that has actually come out and said, you know what? Special teams problems, those are on me. I got to fix some things. He's the special teams is the best unit last week. <laughs> well, it's probably true, but which is, oh my gosh, I can't believe we're, we're even saying that it feels bad coming out of our mouths. But, uh, but I mean, that's, that's probably the only guy that has kind of taken some ownership for the problems of this team so far from the coaching staff. Uh, Shermer hasn't done it. Banjo obviously hasn't done it. And Donatel, I haven't heard him really say it. We don't really hear much from Donatel. We don't hear from Donatel. Who? Yeah. Um, <laughs> kind yeah. of forget he's still there. Yeah, he's uh, it's unfortunate. And I do think that Fangio will latch on somewhere and probably be a good DC uh, for mm-hmm. a, probably a more offensive minded coach that wants nothing to do with the defense. Um, and maybe that's his niche. You know, there's something to be said about uh, being a head coach versus being a coordinator. It's a different job. It's a different skill. Um, we got uh hero coming in here. Vidal. I'll just go Vidal. Does anyone know what the interviewer said to Shelby to piss him off after the Browns game? I know it was Ryan O'Hallorhan. Um, I don't remember the specific question, but I know that Shelby essentially said, like, you're always asking bl- dumb bleep questions. So uh, I don't know, man. These guys are going to be upset. They're losing, and it's ugly right now, and there's going to be some lashes out. I don't think that's the media's fault to asking tough questions. Now, there are stupid questions out there. Uh, we've all heard them. Uh, there's one where Bill Belichick, they're asking, he's like, would you like to run the ball successfully? And he's like, what are we even doing here? I'll have to find that clip. It's hilarious. Um, but uh, I, I didn't know the specifics other than it was Ryan and it was Shelby. All right. looks like he asked the question four times was part of the. I No, I think I think Scott's saying that he asked in the chat. multiple. Oh, times. OK. Oh, sorry. OK, I get I got you. OK. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's yeah. When you're losing, all questions seem very negative and you get very defensive. defensive. Yep. Uh, all of us do that. You know, when, when people are questioning your ability to, to play and uh, yeah, I, it just, everything comes off bad and which, I mean, it should, I mean, I, I don't want the media to, to pull punches by any means. No, I, I think they, they have the right to ask the tough questions to these players. I mean, they get paid the big bucks to, to go out there and answer some of these questions, but also, I mean, these guys are doing what they're doing because they're football players, not because they're great interviewers. No. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's 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 definitely frustrating to get that there. But um, yeah, I I don't know. We'll see what happens. So, Carl, we got three games left, I would say, before the bye week. Uh, what is it going to take for Fangio to get fired in that time? Do you think there's any chance that something like that could happen? Or is it he's going down the ship and, uh, you know, I'll be damned? Because I know historically, Cliss is putting out there like crazy that the interim head coaches have not worked well for the Broncos, which to me means somebody's telling Cliss that also in his ear. Um, from the organization saying, so it's probably not going to happen. Yeah. Um, but is there a chance where you could see something like that happening? I, I think if you have three games where you have the team just get beat on both sides of the ball badly. And I mean, Washington, as bad as the Broncos are, Washington might be one of the worst three bottom teams in football right now. Oh, um, if you get, that. I don't know about that. Well, okay. There, there are some bad teams out there, I guess, but it just, they're pretty bad. They're struggling big time. Obviously can't get much going on offense and defense has kind of been up and down all over the place. I don't know what all happened to their defense this year. Kind of like what we're asking the same questions about the Broncos this year. Um, and so, I mean, if you go out there and get destroyed by Washington and you know, the next couple of games again, where just the team just doesn't look like they're prepared, doesn't look like they're caring a whole lot. I think at that point, you have to make a change. I, I think the fan, the fans would storm Dove Valley if you don't make a change at that point. I mean, I, the pitchforks and torches are coming out. I think that's what what happens at that point. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's rough. And honestly, I would love it if uh, I mean, if the Broncos go on three, they probably have to play Drew Lock. You know, give the people let them eat cake. You know, let, let, give the people what they want, and uh, hopefully, we'll have some uh, directionality and a definitive answer one way or the other um, it, right now. I think that if that was to happen, um, it would be a call from above 
Vic Fangio because I do not think Vic Fangio is going to play Drew Locke if he has any say in it. Uh, I mm-hmm. think there's a lot of trust lost there last year with the style of football he wants to play. Um, Drew putting them in a bad situation defensively, which obviously we know that's what matters to Vic um, a lot, <laughs> how the defense looks. And uh, also the whole thing with the uh, the tracers and whatnot happening. Uh, Vic, that, I think that really, really made him upset and lost a lot of uh, respect there. And it's some people saying Fangio's already fired. I mean, they went out and traded for somebody who knows this scheme and an edge rusher too, right? Like, Peyton's still going out there, even though it didn't cost a lot going out there and giving the coach at least means to go out there and execute his scheme and uh, get a win out there rather than leaving him out to dry. So it's, uh, it's unfortunate. Um, and that's just where the team is, but they are only three and four, one more win. And we're right back in this thing, baby. You know, this, yep. we're tied here with the Kansas city chiefs. I can't imagine how they're probably eating their young right now. Um, <laughs> Yeah, God, there's so many comments I could make from that one. We'll leave right. that one alone. At least the team didn't lose 27 to three. Let, let's just at least say that. It, and it's nice to kind of see Mahomes struggling a little bit this year compared to, to years past. God, he, he's still a good quarterback by any means, but I mean, that defense is just atrocious. As bad as the Broncos have been on defense, that Chiefs, ooh, that, that's like a bottom five defense of the last five years. Yep. Yep. It's, uh, it's unfortunate. We got Andrew coming in here. Good. Uh, Good evening, Andrew, saying catching y'all late from work. What's up, Nick and Carl and my brethren. Cheers, Broncos country. Hashtag mile high huddle for life. Hashtag Denver Broncos for life. Well, good to see you, Andrew. It's okay that you're late. You can just go back and hit the rewind. Do it again. Uh, Maybe do it while you're cooking yourself some dinner or something. It'll be a good time. Or like apparently people like to do, listen to us in the shower. I don't know. I've had, have you had people tell you that, Carl? I've had at least like four people say, I listen to you in the shower. Yep. All right. I mean, God, I hope it's the podcast version. It's not the, I don't need to leave the video out of there. You know, if you're just <laughs> listening to us, that's fine. That's, that's whatever. But the, leave me out of the, the, the video there. Um, but yeah, man, no, it's great uh, to hear that this team is, I guess, making moves, right? Uh, to do some things. We got Mark coming in. Got to throw my favorite podcaster some stars. Ah, oh, Mark, you're great. No, I don't listen while I'm in the shower. I'm on my way home from work. Yes. Well, that's awesome. Keep your eyes on the road, though. Be safe. Yep. Um, we appreciate that. We also have a, uh, Hero coming in here saying, thank you for answering. You can never hear the dang questions. Uh, it's like we can't afford microphones in a multi-billion dollar league. Fire Shermer. Um, it's frustrating. And uh, I hear it, guys. I, and I wish that it was. This is a big reason that I was pining for a quarterback option this offseason in the draft or anything like that. Because there are, there are so many issues with a team or a roster that a good quarterback is probably the only cure-all. Right. Like yep. Peyton Manning played behind a worse offensive line than the Broncos have had the last two years. Crazy, but true. Yep. He was an elite quarterback. Even his last season, I mean, mentally he was, he was able to cover those things. A good quarterback can cover a lot of holes. And when you don't have it, these things tend to fester. They get worse. I, they spread. And until you get that guy, it's going to be tough. I've always wondered, are there great coaches that have been fired because they couldn't find a, a quarterback? Oh, yeah. And and how many bad coaches have been lifted up by a great quarterback that have had this incredible career, but were never a great coach? That happens all the time in the league. Like you said, quarterbacks, I mean, they're about 50% of what happens on the field, uh, whether you win or lose. I'm not saying that I'm contributing wins or losses to the quarterback, but I'm just saying they do play the biggest part. And uh, so it's it just, it's tough to really gauge how great a, a coach is one way or the other without that quarterback or even with the quarterback, then you're kind of questioning is, is this coach even helping? Is there somebody better that could come out here and do more? I don't know. It's unless we see a coach that really just lifts up other guys. I mean, I I think, I think there's a couple guys out there that we've seen really lift up because of their scheme, bad quarterbacks and make them look better than what they are. I mean, Jared Goff, (laughs) he was lifted up by having a coach that knew what he was doing. That's crazy, man. I, who, who knew? So, so Matt Stafford is better than Jared Goff. I saw a lot of takes on Twitter that why would they do that? That they're essentially the same quarterback. That's, that's insane. Um, I guess the big one I want to ask here before we get on out of here to you is, uh, Vic Fangio moving on. Let's say he is moving on. Don't even give me a specific name. What kind of coach would you be looking for to bring to this team? Because I think we might have slightly different answers and it might have a lot to do with uh, where I see this team from a, you know, thousand foot view. Well, I, I think I, I know this is going to sound a little, I don't know. Some people would be disappointed in this kind of answer. 
I wouldn't mind a retread coach. Um, one, I think a lot of times you see first time coaches, most of them fail. They, they really do. The, the odds of them getting everything right. A lot of guys need a time of getting fired, trying to figure out what did I do wrong? What did I do right? And then coming back and, and actually doing something. And I, I think you need a guy that's going to be a very calm voice. I think that is a good player's coach because Vic Fangio has not been a player's coach. He's been a schematic guy. I think he's been a, I think he's done a great job with his staff of actually like coaching up young players and helping them to, to do better than maybe what their play was when they first especially came into the league. But I just, I want a guy that can actually communicate to these players because they just have not had that for these last few years. And Vance Joseph was just, I don't know. He was a raw, raw guy that didn't, <laughs> he was out of his league. I mean, like I said, we've had a lot of first year, first time coaches all right here in a row and it is not done well. So I, I want a guy that can actually, that's been there, done that and has learned from his mistakes. Yeah. For me, I don't give a hoot if they're offensive or defensive. I need somebody who can come in and help establish a positive culture in this locker room and get some belief in there. Um, I know that's really easy, simple thing to say, but Really, I mean, they just need a get right guy in terms of that, because right now it sounds like things have been toxic there. So somebody that they can be and I uh, believe in that has their back. Um, so that's the name that I keep coming back to. He has not been listed to the Broncos, unfortunately, is uh, Todd Bowles. I know that. Oh, man, we need an offensive mind. But like Todd Bowles, uh, he was in New York. I'm not going to judge him for being in New York, just like we shouldn't judge Bill Belichick for being with the Browns those years. You know, <laughs> um, he's also had some time to work across and see Tom Brady and understand what that means for an organization as well as Bruce Arians out there. So uh, Todd Bowles yep. is one that interests me a heck of a lot. Um, and also I like that he will change his scheme based on the opponent. You know, he's a blitz happy coach, um, but against Patrick Mahomes, he's like, you know what? We're going to give this guy time. We're going to drop whatever. And I think our offensive line can get after him. Um, and he was right. Mahomes looked terrible and the chiefs got whipped in the super bowl. So Todd Bowles is one. He hasn't been uh, linked with the Broncos, but I think he's a get right culture guy. Uh, players love him where he has ever, wherever he's gone. And I think it would be a one that uh, I would personally stamp the approval on. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's a good name. I've always liked him. Uh, you know, when he was uh, with Arizona there for a while, loved what he brought to that team. And and I, I thought he played, helped the team play above their talent. Yeah. Uh, and like I said, with the jets, he had very little talent. He still had that team winning quite a few games. I mean, they still weren't great by any means, but they, they were also in a division with Tom Brady. So that that's never easy to go out there and win that division. And I think he was saddled by some ownership, by some just really bad decisions all around. And, and he still had them playing great every single week. And uh, yep. so, I, yeah, please and go get that guy. And like there for every Sean McVay that's out there, you know, the scheme leader for that team, right? Like the offense, the identity for that, his side of the ball. You have Kyle Shanahan too, right? Whose scheme is great, but like, I feel like you're losing out on a lot of the other areas that you need to have that CEO leader who has a finger in everything, but not a whole hand. Right. Yep. So um, that's something I think that hopefully you'd get from a Todd Bowles empowering those guys around him. But uh, uh, who knows? I mean, God, three and four, maybe the Broncos win this game against Washington football team. They go on a hot streak. They win another game. They go into Dallas, uh, shock everybody. Uh, and then, uh, win another game. And then, you know, what, what are we, what would we be then? Uh, six and four going into the yep. bye? It's possible, right? We still have Broncos 17 and one contributing to the chats all the time. Although that's impossible now, but, um, you know, the positivity still out there. It's not all doom and gloom. We still got a lot of season to go. Yep. We'll see. I mean, hell when we're talking about things that could happen, maybe Drew Lock comes in and provides a spark for this team and we go on a run and it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Jerry Judy coming back. Maybe yeah. all of a sudden he looks like that. Pro Bowl wide receiver that that the Broncos have been missing there in the middle, yeah. a guy that can get open early and and fast and um I yeah there, there's so many things that could still happen for this team to go right. You still might get Bradley Chubb back after mm -hmm. the bye, so if you can even just win two of the next three and be, find yourself at 500, get yourself Bradley Chubb back. Maybe that defensive line all of a sudden starts playing lights out because all of a sudden you got somebody else that can get after the quarterback. Uh, so, uh, Michaela said it earlier that we need some positivity. We need some, some hope that we're not just already looking at the off season and saying, all right, we're done with this season. What are we going to do in 2022? Yep, exactly. So we're going to get guys back. We're going to get healthy and, uh, hopefully this will be more enjoyable football going forward. Win loss. Uh, we're going to talk about it and we're going to be here for you guys, whether that's the Broncos 
you know, going in the direction we want or the Broncos and another off season of uncertainty, but hopefully getting better, getting another draft and uh, building that foundation going forward. So we'll see Peyton the eyes are on you. Uh, hopefully it'll get better. That's going to do it for us today, guys. So uh, we appreciate the heck out of you. Make sure you're following Carl and myself on Twitter, Carl at Carl Dumbler and myself at Nick Kendall, MHH. Also make sure you're following us at BTB football pod and at mile high huddle. Go over to facebook.com forward slash mile high huddle and facebook.com forward slash mile high huddle pod. Join the conversation there. If we didn't talk enough, Drew Lock versus Teddy Bridgewater, that's going on over there. If you're tired of that stuff, find a different chat. You know, there's there's plenty of things. That's the beauty of those groups. Um, and get your opinion out there and engage in some conversation, hopefully civilly, but uh, you know, you do you. Um, also, YouTube, subscribe, like, and share, hit that bell notification, and you'll know when we go live. Uh, every single and my cheeks are red, it's because I'm in a blanket here and it's actually starting to get uh warm in this room um but uh yeah what can you do um so carl what's the rest of your night looking like besides obviously watching our braves win the world series or win the game one of the world series <laughs> well, of I'm course gonna... of course now nah, i'm gonna go spend a little time with the the dogs and uh haven't got a couple days i've only got to kind of do a couple little things with them so i want to go play a little soccer with them and uh just maybe watch a movie with them i'm not sure i've got a few options here Oh, man, Jeremy, making me laugh here. Start the shower and hit rewind. Well, again, I'm not going to tell you guys what to do. Carl's haircut is looking pretty good, I will say. it's uh, He's been looking pretty fly there. So thank you guys very much. Obviously, Billy and the Broncos, we'll see you again next Tuesday. Uh, but until then, stay safe, make good decisions. Go Broncos.